looking for the sun, there are certain tourist landmarks on the map. There's Brigham Young's winter home, the old tabernacle. And then there's one all the kids go to, and Allison Barlow found that one. And you know, Bruce, they surveyed the kids in St. George, and they asked them, do you know where all the tourist places are, the tabernacle, the temple? The kids didn't know that any of those places, but they know this place. Now, what is this place? This place is Thomas Judd's store, and it looks like it came right out of the turn of the century. And what's the attraction of Thomas Judd's store? What does he sell that's so wonderful? Thomas Judd sells candy and much more. <laughs> It's morning, and the candy man is open for business, just like every morning for the past 50 years. Morning, young man. How are you doing this morning? Good. Tom Judd's grandfather and father opened their first store, a general store, 76 years ago. And at that time, it was uh, mostly handled sheep accounts. There were a lot of sheep in this country then. And we carried hay and grain and Levi's and all horse supplies and groceries. And, and they carried candy. And candy sold even when times changed and general stores could no longer compete. Some corn nuts okay. and a black cow. All right. Thomas Judd's Mercantile became Thomas Judd's Candy Store. Okay. And though the family name is still over the door, times changed again. And now Mark and Barbara Green own the store. But Judd sold it only on the condition that he could keep his job. Okay. Here's change, buddy. Okay. There you go. If you're a kid in St. George, bye. That's important. They love it, and they, they love to come to this old place. It, it's uh, enjoyable for them. I come after school, and I come during school, and I come in the morning. Okay, 20. In the morning, the 826th graders at Woodward Elementary keep Judd's busy. But at lunchtime, it's pure pandemonium. Oh, hey, what are you doing? We have to know karate to get in. <laughs> it's a panic. Everybody's pushing and shoving. It's scary. You get trampled on and you get smashed into the counters. And you always, like, you drop something and then it, you never see it again because it's already taken. And it takes a while to get your food because everyone's pushing and trying to get theirs. And, but, it, but I like it over here because it's lots better than lunch. Do you want the little mama or the big one? It's a solid 40 minutes there of nothing but kids, and it's, uh, it makes you kind of tired. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love them. It's like I say, I couldn't stay this long if I didn't love kids, but like I say, it gets a little noisy, and that's the main part, it's the noise that'll kind of get stupid. selling memories. No one will ever get rich from this store. You don't do that by just selling candy to children. But I feel we're doing something much more important. And it gives them a sense of security, of belonging. This is a their store. We all just stand out there and talk and play around and it's just lots of fun. For 40 minutes until the school bell rings, the children feel like grown-ups. There's only one way to describe the noontime ritual. A privilege. KMP remembers it was a privilege half a century ago, when he was a kid. <laughs> he says you can learn some important things with a nickel and a little freedom. Well, I think the children know that they need to be on their own a little bit and think for themselves and be a little independent. They tend to provision all, the, all their life, you know. For 50 years, Thomas Judd has seen the children of St. George learn and grow and send their own kids here. They'll come in, and I've never seen that kid before, and they're maybe down a third generation, and I'll say, you ought to be related to so-and-so, and they'll say, how did you know that? <laughs> he knows because he's a candy man, and the candy man knows children. It's worked out great for me, and I thought I'd quit when I was 65, but I still want to go on working.
and I can guarantee the kids want him to keep on working. The most popular man in town. Absolutely. Tell me about the proximity of the store to the school these kids come from. Right across the street. Right and across the street. Just kitty corner to the Tabernacle if you ever want to go there on Tabernacle Street. But the kids haven't noticed that. They don't know Any the penny candy is. left? Yeah, there's penny candy there for two cents. <laughs> Do they sell anything but candy? They sell hot dogs and burritos and drinks at lunch, but mostly it's candy. Didn't I read in the paper a while back there was something of a controversy about the safety and about, you know, the health aspect well, of eating course, candy Well, of course, the PTA lunch? always gets a little concerned with the kids running across the street. They finally had to compromise, and Judd's pays half for the uh, crossing guard at lunchtime. They're concerned about their teeth, but kids have been going there for 76 years, and they protest whenever the PTA starts talking about closure. And after 76 years, it's hard to believe that Judd's is ever going to close for, for pressure for the we PTA. We had a store kind of like that across from my elementary school, and I thought it was great. Terrific story. Thank you, Allison. Still to come, it may not be the only way to fly, but it's about the only way you can fly and smile and get bugs on your teeth. This restored relic has original air conditioning, and we'll show you how one man's labor of love is still punching holes in Utah skies. Next on Primetime Access.